Welcome back to San Diego People. I'm Sandra Moss. Today we're focusing on one of the most heartbreaking tragedies that can happen to any family, the loss of a baby. One in four pregnancies result in miscarriage and the emotional consequences can be devastating. Michaeline Friedenberg is a president and founder of Life Perspectives. And she's here to uh, we'll talk about some of the grieving families that you have dealt with. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much. It must be really tough. Um, it's a, a really deep pain. I've heard that, that, that really, uh, it's heartbreak that you can feel. Yes, the wound is very deep for those who have lost a child through miscarriage or through stillbirth. And I think what makes it even more difficult is that our family and friends often don't know how to support us. And culturally, we don't really acknowledge or like have as simple as something as a, a sympathy card. There isn't such a thing that's available for them. Why is that? Miscarriage really is still, uh, you know, to some degree, a, a secret that many women keep. It absolutely is a secret, which is surprising because you shared one out of four, which is about a million miscarriages every year in the United States. And yet when you talk to men and women, they often feel like they're the only ones mm -hmm. who are going through this. So I think we've just, we're at a time where we feel awkward talking about it. We're not sure how to share it. Um, I've certainly heard from those who we work with that sometimes when that is shared with family members, they don't know what to do. And they interpret that as, well, then we just should move on and they bury that pain that can happen as well often um, there's interaction with of course medical personnel and medical personnel are able to take care of the physical needs they want to help beyond that but they haven't received any training for it mm -hmm. and so therefore I'll often hear from medical professionals like I don't want to make it worse so I just don't acknowledge the loss I take care of the physical needs. Yet from the parents who've experienced the loss, for them, the message is this isn't a loss. I do not have permission to grieve. And then they don't even know that there's resources available for them. Yeah. Tell us the resources. And that's where uh, your organization, Life Perspectives, comes mm -hmm. in. How do you help? Yes. Well, there's a couple different ways that we do. For so, for a man or a woman, family member or friend who has been impacted by loss through miscarriage, we do have a digital resource for them. It's called miscarriagehurts.com. And so we wanted to have a website because there tends to be so much secrecy and feelings of isolation. We thought having a private place for them to go to and to learn that they are not alone, uh, to have some interactive activities that they can begin to participate in and then connect them with help in the community so that's one way that we're able to help that individual and then we do our best we've begun training in the past few years for both medical and mental health professionals to equip them so that they can be part of that process of normalizing the grief giving permission to grieve and knowing how to adequately support and men and women they, they grieve differently don't they they grieve differently, maybe not as differently as sometimes we think that they do. In fact, um, uh, back in the 80s, a group of women psychologists came together and wanted to study loss after miscarriage. And so they put together what's called the perinatal grief scale. And then we always have assumptions when we do things like this and do research. So they assumed that women would experience grief um, much more than men would. And yet they found that yes, women, initially, they did this at six months, 12 months, and 24 months past the loss. Um, women did score higher, but they didn't score much higher than men. And then even more interesting for them is that at two years, the numbers actually flipped. The grief for women began to decrease, and it actually began to increase for men, especially in the area of feeling helpless and hopeless, this feeling of despair. And in some of the studies where you're speaking with individuals, and I certainly think anecdotally, is that his partner, right, they've suffered this great loss, but he's focused on his partner. And our culture tells him to do that. Mm -hmm. The medical professionals tell them to do that. He actually thinks this is good because I don't know what to do. So I'm going to begin to take care of her needs. But then at some point when she's doing better, 
those feelings that he didn't deal with begin to come up and he doesn't know what to do with them. He wonders if there's something wrong with him. Um, he doesn't want to talk to his partner about it because he's afraid that he's going to trigger that pain and that grief again. So he often carries that alone. And we do know if that's left unresolved, that can really begin to interfere with relationships and just kind of cope, uh, healthy coping.